All right, guys. Pardon the extreme grodiness. Oh my God. Ugh. Got back from the gym and just went right back to work and figured, hey, I'll just shower after work. And then I looked out the window and it looked gorgeous outside. I was thinking they didn't forecast it to be nice tonight and sure shit, check the weather. And it looks beautiful tonight. As you can see by that windsock, it's gorgeous. So we're gonna get up there. I did like a random video pick for today. Every time I have a video idea, I throw it on the notes section of my phone. And then if I ever get a chance to fly like this and I don't have an actual plan, I just open that up and point to a random video. And um, that's what we did. So today I'm gonna go over all the times that I've had the authorities called on me. So uh, I'll go over all the complaints I've ever had here and I, I'll spit out my gum, so don't worry. I just realized I'm chewing it. And anyone who's been called, so one time I had the Coast Guard called on me, so stuff like that. We'll go over all that when we get in the air and we need to do that right now because uh, we only got about an hour till sunset and I won't fly. So yeah. All right, all set up, ready to go. It's one of those days where it's like really hot on the ground, but it's gonna be chilly up there. So definitely want to hit your launch the first time. This is one of those airports where they want you to call. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Berkeley County Airport, ultralight powered paraglider, taking off from the ramp. Uh, we're gonna climb to about 500 feet, cross midfield and depart to the south, Berkeley County. when you're not expecting to fly and get to and that's like 20 percent all right let's get out of this airport leave them alone i don't see any traffic five no traffic for two three safe to cross the runway directly perpendicular and i'm gonna make a call on the radio when we leave and that's gonna be that. And Berkeley County traffic, ultralight power paraglider, just crossed midfield, departing to the southwest. Final call till we get back, Berkeley County. And that'll do it. That's enough to keep everybody on the ground happy. Now I can turn my radio off. Just not a good idea, because I'm still in the vicinity of the airport, but I want to listen to some tunes. And we'll catch back up with you guys when we get to our uh, final destination over there. All right, guys, I'm thinking this is the best place to be right now. These uh, lakes are owned by a real estate development company, so I don't think there'll be anybody hunting on it. Because um, it's kind of a dick move flying in uh, farmer's fields during hunting season really low because uh, people are hunting. So anyway, yeah, let's go over all the times that I've had the cops called on me or the authorities in, in any way. So. The first one, and I made a video about this, and it was, I think it's one of my more popular videos, and it's only because um, people like to go on that video and give me shit, but I was at uh, a local airport here that I like to fly from, and, hang on, let me get out my 360 here. Holy shit. Whoa. Dude. There are monster fish in here, and those did not look like carp. All right, so real quick, I'm, don't tell anybody, but I'm planning to fly here and land and fish. I don't know if I posted the video or not, but I tried it once already, and my fishing pole fell apart on me <laughs> on the way here, so I had to turn back and land. <laughs> so, oh no, my fishing pole broke. Oh no. It's dangling, man, that's making me fucking nervous. See this? The bale came loose and the line's unraveling. Not worth it for YouTube. Bust my shit. There's so much room back there. I should have brought it today. That'd have been a great idea, but you know, I didn't. Back to the story. So the first one was at a local airport. Uh, got there in the morning. I'm not gonna tell this whole story because I'll link the video above, but got there in the morning. Uh, the fog started to roll in and the ceiling was low. 
and the fog rolled in from one side of the airport, but the other, looking the other way, I had well over a mile of visibility. So I probably had half mile of visibility one way and then crystal clear the other way and crystal clear looking straight up. So I launched, uh, I went out for a nice long flight. When I got back, uh, the airport manager had some words for me and um, he wasn't happy. So someone had reported me and said I launched into uh, like IMC conditions or something like that. I don't recall what the complaint was, but the, the airport manager was real hot. He was, he was pretty irritated. Um, and again, I'll link the video for that whole story, but very long story short, I uh, ended up resolving that with that airport manager and I have a good relationship with him now. And um, I was able to obviously convince him that I did nothing wrong. And I told him I had the video with me if he wanted to see it. Um, but yeah, he had threatened to like call the FAA on me and things like that. So um, that was one time, but that was the local like airport authorities after me. Another time, same airport, I was flying with a buddy and it was cold and we had gone for an XC. So it was warmer down low on the way home. We were down low flying uh, to tr try to stay warm. And we got within, I want to say a half mile or a mile of a prison, right? So I knew that, I knew the general area of the prison was off to my left and we were trying to stay, you know, legal, meaning not over houses, things like that. And that path took us within about a half mile of the prison. Well, it turns out that the prison saw us and put that, man, these fish are huge. <laughs> the prison saw us and uh, put the prison under full lockdown. They called the airport, asked, you know, what's going on over there? We got parachutists jumping over the airport. In any case, they were uh, the airport manager, or not the airport manager, but an employee of the airport came and told us that um, he's pretty irritated. Good, there's people fishing back here, man. I'm going to come back here one day. And um, yeah, he's like, hey, you guys can't be flying over the prison, this, that, the other thing. And I was like, you know, well, we're not flying over the prison. And again, I had my GPS on and my camera on. So I was like, I can prove it to you. And he's like, nah, I believe you. Just keep a wide berth. So now I don't even fly in that direction. I just stay the hell away from there. Um, even though I didn't break the law, just not trying to stir shit up, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, another time, and I, I don't think I had the video for this one. The video died right after I got to this location where the cops were called on me. So, um, and I only think the cops were called on me. So I told this story in another video too, but I was flying around a neighborhood. So that's like a popular thing to do here is not an actual neighborhood, but they chop down trees to build up neighborhoods. And when they do that, you know, at night the construction crew's gone. It's just wide open area to fly uh, where you're, you're usually away from people. Well, half this neighborhood was built, the other half wasn't. I've flown in areas like that before and it's been fine. Um, you know, you just, usually people like it and I don't, you know, I don't frequent the area. I, I you know, I'll go once in a while, maybe not even once a month, like very rarely would I return to that same spot. But in any case, I was flying there and I found out later it was a retirement community, uh, a, a gated community called Del Webb. So they have security. You're not allowed in this neighborhood unless you live there or you're friends with someone who lives there. So I'm flying around and this car is chasing me. So in my mind, I'm thinking, dude, this person really digs paramotors, man. They really want a picture of me, I'm thinking, right in my head. So another guy fishing. Dude, I'm coming back here and fishing. So I'm thinking this guy, you know, hey, he digs paramotors. Well. So I go fly past the car and it's a lady and she is pissed. She's screaming at me, she's on the phone. And that's why I assumed that, God, these fish are freaking gigantic. They're, they're bass, dude. I can see them clearly through the water. Oh man, I can't wait to come back here. I can't wait to come back here. Anyway, where was I? Uh, oh yeah, she's out of her car screaming at me. So I'm like foot dragging past her like, yeah. And I realize she's pissed. I'm like, oh shit. Well, she's yelling at me to land. She's like, land, land. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. There's no way I'm landing. You know, cause she obviously thought, well, she owns the airspace. And again, I was not near anybody. So, you know, I knew I hadn't done anything wrong and I just kind of laughed. And uh, man, but she was livid and she started chasing me. So I left and I felt so bad about it. And I was worried about that the cops had been called that I called the local police department and asked, you know, if there was any, like, calls placed about a complaint about, like, low-flying aircraft. They had no idea what the hell I was talking about. They were more interested in asking me about what a paramotor was than the actual complaint. They were like, oh, yeah, you didn't break any laws? I was like, no. They're like, oh, okay, so what's this thing called? A paramotor? And I, like, is it a drone? I'm like, no, it's not a drone, man. It's like a, it's like an aircraft. And anyway, 
they didn't seem to care, but I felt like I did the right thing by trying to call and resolve it just in case, you know, because they're never going to be able to find me, the cops, and I don't want that complaint, like, just sitting there and these complaints piling up without, like, me at least trying to address it was my thought. So that's what I did that time. Uh, the next time that comes to mind was I was flying at the beach, which, again, we're not allowed to do here, so we do it rarely. Um, not allowed to launch from the beach. You can fly to the beach, but it's hard to do. Regardless, I'm flying at the beach, and, um, you know, we're, we're out over the water. Not, not too far. You know, gliding distance to the beach. We're out over the water doing some light acro. I'm doing wingovers, barrel rolls. It was a beautiful day. It was so much fun. And my buddy, who's a paramotor pilot, calls me, and he's not flying this day. He's not with us. He calls me. He's like, man, is everybody okay? I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? Why, why are you asking? He's like, we, uh, the Coast Guard, I don't know how he knew. He must monitor the Coast Guard somehow. But he's like, yeah, the Coast Guard was called uh, for reports of a skydiver crashing into the water. And I was like, yeah, that was me. Definitely. It's definitely me. Uh, but we're all good, man. Everyone's fine. And I've had that call a couple times, actually. I've had that, you know, skydiver crashing call. Uh, oh, big alligator. Nope. Log. Um, but that's a common one, right? They don't know what we are. When you do that acro and you disappear behind the tree line, people think you got hurt. Um, so that was that time, which leads into my next story. So this one happened at the airport I'm just flying at, out of right now. Uh, and it was the, the last time I was there, actually. I'd gone for a flight, and when I got back, the buddy I was flying with, um, he had landed before me, and he says, he's like, yeah, uh, apparently somebody came to the airport complaining, or not complaining, but concerned about an aircraft crashing or something like that. And I was like, well, I've heard this many times. That's that's me. You know what I mean? And what they say, you know, and it's like, my buddy's like, I don't know, but they talk to the people in the hangar over there. So I go over to the hangar, and the people in the hangar, I'm just going to be honest with you, they were they were rude to me. Like I go into the hangar, and they, were, they saw me walk into the hangar, right? The hangar was open, the front door, and I walk in, they're working on like an airboat, and they see me walk in and ignore me completely. And I'm standing there, trying not to interrupt because they're having a conversation, which is the polite thing to do. You walk in, they see you, they should acknowledge you, right? At least that's what I would effing do. Right, hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? No, they give me none of that. They let me stand there for what felt like an eternity. It had to be a minute, 45 seconds. I'm standing there, trying not to interrupt, but I want to be like, yo, you know, like, hello, what's up? You know, what's your problem? What? And and I didn't go in there thinking there was any tension. I went in there thinking like, I'm gonna go have a conversation, see what the complaint was about. And I walk in, they give me this sign treatment, which gets me in a shitty mood. And I'm like, hey guys, and like, hey. You know, I'm like, hey, I heard there might have been a concerned citizen come in here complaining. Like, yeah, they said you were doing ac uh, aerobatics over their house. I was like, okay, well, I was like, that, you know, that didn't happen. But what, what did it, you know, what else did they say? Like, like, oh, I don't know if you know the rules, but you're not supposed to be doing aerobatic over populated area. I'm like, I know the rules, and again, I wasn't doing any aerobatics over a populated area. And they said, well, it, they said that you like dive bomb their house or something. And I'm, I'm like, okay, well. Look, I'm telling this guy, well, I don't know that. And he keeps, like, reciting the rules to me, which half of me understands. Half of me says, well, I'm an ultralight pilot or paraglider pilot, so I'm, they might think I don't know the rules, right? That's that's the short of it. And the other half of me is, like, getting irritated that this guy's spit rules at me. You know, he doesn't know that I know the rules, though, you know? So I, give, I always give people the benefit of the doubt on that. So I let him talk. He's like, look, I know the rules, man. I wasn't doing that. Um, but I just wanted to come make sure that they weren't mad, there wasn't a complaint file, I was just trying to follow up to the right thing. I'm like, yeah, just, you know, be careful out there. And the guy has just said something, had to get the last word in. Like, Whatever, man. You guys, you guys have a good day. And I was polite. So, um, that's where that one ended. And again, that didn't, that wasn't like a bad, like, thing. Nobody called the cops or anything, but it's just like, I don't know, whenever these things happen, it gets me thinking that, like, people, I don't know, like, they have, like, a negative view Dude, now I'm thinking about this space because I have like long hair and I have, like, have tattoos and shit. I don't know. Some people judge me on that. Uh, and usually I don't give a shit, but that could be part of it. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, that's how that one ended. And uh, looking back, I know what they were talking about. So I was flying over a field, and I won't do this again, but I was flying over a field, and it was a small field. I could land in it, but I couldn't take off in it, one of those kind of fields. And there was a bunch of kids out, and they were waving at me at the bottom of the driveway. They're waving. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go do like a little wing over. So it wasn't really even wing over. It was like a steep turn, and then a swoop, and I was at like maybe 150 feet. That's as low as I got. And then I, I got the hell out of there, right? Because I knew it was 
kind of near people, but I was trying to like, you know, give the kids like something, you know, oh, you know, they might enjoy that. And uh, they did, and they were screaming. So that's what the guy was probably talking about. Um, so maybe it's on me. Maybe I was being a little bit too aggressive. Hang on, I'm gonna give this guy a little flyby. And um, yeah, so that's that time. I've never actually encountered the police. Uh, they've never actually like met me anywhere, and I've never had to explain myself to the cops. But I, like I said, I called the cops almost on myself to make sure they were that I was okay. But. Um, that's really it. I've been pretty fortunate and I really try to take this stuff seriously because I don't have a lot of options for LZs. You guys hear me talk about this in a lot of my vlogs. I don't have a lot of options so it's important for me to preserve the LZs that I have. Uh, so, you know, airports are the majority of those so I'm always following up on complaints or concerns at airports. Always make sure everything's okay. And um, you know, even when I'm not there, I, I, I try to follow up on that stuff, make sure that, that no one's getting pissed off at me. But. Uh, I've been flying around this lake long enough, and this video is probably dragging on because it's one of those talking head videos. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't like it, click the uh, dislike button. And make sure you click it twice. And then um, yeah, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna say that again when I get on the ground. So we'll talk to you guys uh, later. Bye. So of course the camera died before I got back, but tonight was just the most, it's one of those like perfect nights. Not not a single bump, perfectly smooth. I don't know if you can see it, there's like fog, like starting to form over the airport here. It's It was the, it was a perfect night. So um, thanks for watching. I got gum in my mouth again, I'm sorry, but like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. All right, so I don't know where I'm gonna put this in the video, but um, dude, more random adventures. It seems like, I don't know, 20% of the time I come to the airport, something freaking cool happens, dude. So this guy, Luke back here, he's the guy in one of my last videos or my other videos where uh, he saw me take off in the, in the paramotor and then chase me down on his bananas, not chase me, but went up looking for me. Uh, and uh, he's just a character, man, he's cool as shit. And uh, him and his brother got a, him and his brothers got a bunch of bonanzas at this airport. Uh, there's like, it's like two more bonanzas back there. I think they got like four or five here. Um, but I heard him calling the radio 
And uh, he says he's taking runway two, three, and he swings in right by my truck. He just goes, come on. <laughs> so there's no way I'm not getting in the, in, in the cockpit. There's just no way. Can't, can't say no to that. So um, yeah, man, we just went for a quick flight around the pattern, went out over the lake, came back. This is my first time flying in a Bonanza. Uh, and it was a V-tail Bonanza too. These are old, They're, I mean, awesome planes. So dude, just what an adventure. I'm so psyched out. I'm in such a good mood. Smooth air your night, beautiful weather. Uh, great flight, <laughs> dude. I'm just, I'm such a lucky dude. So happy. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that even a smidgen as much as I did, but um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I don't even care. I'm in a good mood. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.